Next on Rugby Wrap-Up, Major League Mystery Guest Ed Fido. Wait, that doesn't make him a mystery guest. Also, New York GM Steve Lewis, along with Dan Power and Brian Ray on all things Major League Rugby. Rugby Wrap-Up brought to you in part by Sheehy Auto Stores. It's easy at Sheehy. The Pig and Whistle, the world's best rugby pump, and Lean and Limber, stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up. Matt McCarthy in New York City. Brian Ray up in Halifax. That's Nova Scotia. Gorgeous Dan Dan Power. Dan has got his Gilgroniacs behind him. They won in Seattle, so we got to get him on early. So it's time for you guys to guess who the mystery guest is. Then Brian, you can go ahead because you're the idiot savant here. You can ask him the first question. I'm concerned because the last time we did this did not go well. Uh, are, are you associated, I'm being careful with my words here, with an Eastern Conference team? Um, yes, I am. <laughs> Uh, are you currently undefeated? Yes. Are you a member of the uh, Rugby New York backline? I think so. Are you the host of what was my favorite Instagram segment of 2021 uh, that you're no longer the host of, but you're no longer at that team, but you've just picked up a new show that is now my favorite show on Instagram? Um, no. Did you come off the bench in this uh past weekend's game against Dallas. Bench? Mm, no. Would it's you so consider yourself the fooey fooey moy moy of goal line dropouts in Major League Rugby? Ooh. Uh, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your first season in Major League Rugby? Ooh. Yes, that's right, yes. Did you score a try on the weekend? Uh, no. <laughs> Did you uh, represent a New Zealand at uh, age grade level? Uh, no. So, uh, mystery guest, uh, did you represent your nation in, in international uh, play? Uh, yes. Yes, I did. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome welcome in a man that played sevens and fifteens for his nation. Brian, who is it? Well, you'd have to think it's Andrew Coe. <laughs> Let's bring in our mystery guest. Mr. It's none other than Mr. Ed Fido. There he is. Oh. Oh, oh, you guys. You guys are horrible. How dare you not know I assumed greatest. he was in the game of the weekend. <laughs> Samoa 7s 46 up, times. Samoa 15s eight times. Bordeaux bagels. Come on. Brisbane, Dan. <laughs> Brisbane City, Dan. And he was in with the yeah. Worcester Warriors. Come on, guys. Hey, Ed, I, I apologize for thinking that you were Tongan legend, Fui Fui Moi Moi. You're much better looking, <laughs> Fui. We got to take a quick break and we'll be right back with Ed right after this. Been blind since I was four. And I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste. And my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. It has a taste and the flavor. What do you think's on the label? I think there's a, a naked woman riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig and Whistle, on West 36th Street. All right, we're back with our special guest, Mr. Ed Fido. Ed, thank you for coming on the show. You have made an impact, a big splash, so to speak, in the two games that you've been in so far for New York. Are you surprised by the, the level of rugby? What, what, was your, what were you thinking? Were you thinking it was going to be better, worse, or is it about what you thought? Obviously, rugby is still sort of new here in America, which is, um, I was excited coming in. I didn't, it was not easy. We know yeah. what rugby is not easy. Like, you can't look at it, it's like easy. Because if I if I set my mind to look at it that way, then I mean, I'm, I'm here just to to be here and not actually focus. And so I actually take it very seriously before moving over. I know rugby, it's getting better and better every year. So obviously, yeah, I expect that it's going to be on there. Uh, it's almost like back home, my in New Zealand, like fast rugby, very quick and that. So yeah, I, 
I don't know. I expect it to live where it is at the moment. So yeah. Yeah, Ed, I got a, actually got a question about your shirt. Um, I think the the punctuation's wrong. Shouldn't that be a question mark and perhaps a suggestion to your opponents uh, for this season <laughs> trying to tackle you? <laughs> And you've played all over the world. I mean, you've played in Australia, you've played in France, top 14, you've played in the English Premiership, of course, obviously in, in New Zealand. I mean, how, how did the opportunity come around for you to come to Major League Rugby? Uh, but, so I was in, I mean, you mentioned that I was in France and, and then I went to England. So, I mean, obviously when COVID happened, a lot of, uh, a lot of teams in England changed their their squads, like what I mean about, they make their squads one bit smaller, so they got rid of a lot of guys. So unfortunately, I was one of those guys that got got let go. But then I went back home. Uh, then obviously in Moana, the Pacific Commonwealth in Moana came up, and that was one of the goals to try and make that. It would be a really, it would be a really good team to be part of it, not only for to play Super Rugby, but for the history and uh, it'll be a proud moment for my family. Then obviously that didn't happen. The, the morning coach have different plans than than I talk back home and yeah I guess it was just there was no other option to stay back home is either stay back uh, as a wider squad for one night and go back to work and play um, uh, club rugby back in Auckland but I mean I'm, I'm in that that stage of my uh, career now where I can rather be going back and play club rugby I just want to like you know just enjoy the moment and when New York came around, when Rick called me and told me his plan and what he wants to do for New York, I, I was a bit excited as well. And it's not every day you're going to wake up in New York and right. thinking, oh man, I'm, I'm in New York and I get to live here. And obviously, our apartment, it's really nice. I can see the whole view of um, the skyline. Of the skyline. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, I think, yeah, it's, it's like uh, an opportunity and uh, and the right option that when when it comes to it. All right. Well, look, we know you got we know you got a rock, but we want to thank you for coming on. We're looking forward to seeing the home opener. I'll see you there, and thank you, sir, for coming on. Much appreciated, <laughs> thank Mr. You. Feed up. Thank you thank very you. much for having me, guys. Thank you. And before we get to uh, last week's action and upcoming matches, we have a brief moment with uh, Mr. Stephen Lewis, the general manager of Rugby United New York, New York, who re- arranged our mystery guest coming on for us. Stephen, welcome. Good evening, gents. Good to see you. Likewise, Steve, big, big uh, weekend ahead. You've got the home opener. Exactly, and, and not far from where you were born. So, yeah, JFK Stadium, Hoboken, Hoboken High School, in fact, 3 p.m. Sunday against the Free Jacks. Easy to get to, right? Path train, ferry. You and Brian can get a ferry across, hold hands, look back at the iconic skyline, very romantic. Bus um, goes there, too. Bus, you know. lift, Uber, Shanksy's Pony. What's not to like? Very exciting. Rickshaw. You could take a rickshaw there. All right. So, Steve, what are we looking for in terms of um, how New York is is going? You're 3-0. and You had an unbelievable win in Dallas in the cold weather. And one would argue or could argue that it was your second string front row. They certain nobody told them that. Yeah, yeah. Very happy. You know, um, it was time to rotate. I mean, the coaches have a, a plan, a plan for the season. Obviously, that gets... That changes from week to week, but but going into Dallas, you know, we, we felt it was an opportunity to um, give some a look at, look at some other players, some, rotate some players, freshen it up, give some players a rest. So you know, uh, job done. It was a good, a good, uh, good outing from all concerned. We had, we had some injury disruptions in the in the last sort of twenty four hours, changed a few things as well. But you know, bonus bonus point went on the road. Happy with that. Three wins on the road. Very happy with where we are right now. Far be it from Brian to compliment New York ever, you know, but I mean, the, the scrum was so dominant, he could probably play scrum half behind it. Whoa, Oof. whoa, whoa. And you know what? They got plenty of scrum. Or, 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 Dan, or you. We've seen other teams do uh, try and make kind of festival atmospheres out of things around the game. Is there anything planned outside of the stadium or anything going on that, the, that you guys have for the home opener? Yeah, we, we've got obviously the in, in stadium stuff. We're actually having a, a curtain raiser. A couple of the sort of better high school teams, Aspetuck, Connecticut, are playing Fort Hunt. So we're trying to do different things with curtain raisers over the course of the season. So that's that's this weekend. But we just think it's going to be a great occasion. Looking forward to it. Liz, obviously, great game this weekend against New England. Uh, I'm a massive fan of rivalries in sport, none bigger than Boston and New York. It, it transcends sports into the cities as well. 
you guys embracing that? Is it are the, are the boys bought in? Boston, New York is absolutely a rivalry. We uh, actually played them three times this year, uh, just because of the you know the way the the 13 team league fixture list has worked out and two of them are in new york one up there so yeah we absolutely embrace it uh we respect new england uh in particular i think they've recruited well in the off season i think you're seeing uh, we feel we're better uh we also think they're better so we're looking to see what's happening in the east it, it's it's a big rivalry i think it's um i think both teams will be in the hunt at the end of the season so i'm really excited to see how it uh it goes this weekend what, what's something that you want the fans to know about the team? It's, it's interesting because, you know, we're talking about cohesion. Everyone talks about cohesion in team sports, and that's the key in keeping a team together over a period of time. And I subscribe to all of that. Um, I think what's interesting for I was worried about this year because we brought in a lot of players, right? Probably um, 11, 12 new players. And so you've got the old, you know, favorites, New York guys, Brakeley, Fawcett, these kind of guys. You've got Ellis and Pryor. And we've also got new guys. So so I think for our fans coming back for a home opener, like, you know, Ed Fido, your, your guest, but we have some exciting new players. And I think that's what fans are going to have been looking forward to seeing. They've seen them three times on the telly uh, away from home, but now they can see them live. That, that's going to be exciting for fans. All right, so that's Hoboken, New Jersey, 3 p.m. Sunday. The rivalry between Boston and New York continues, this time on the rugby pitch. Thank you, Stephen, the general manager, Mr. Stephen, the Lizard Lewis. Uh, guys, don't go away. We'll be right back with our predictions for this week. Next, after this. Selling or trading in your vehicle? Sheehy makes it easy. With Easy Trade, start online or visit us in store. We want your vehicle, and we'll give you up to 125% of KBB value. It's easy at Sheehy. Sheehy.com. <laughs> And guys, what's in front of us right now? First one up, we've got Friday Night Lights. Seattle, who lost a tough one against a very, very good Gil uh, Gilgroni team up at Starfire, is back at Starfire, and they're hosting NOLA, Brian. Yeah, uh, I'm expecting a better performance from uh, Seattle. I mean, not that they played badly against Austin, but uh, didn't just quite have the the same zip I, I didn't think we've seen in some other games. And, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of looking for a little bit more at home. I'm expecting them to win against uh, Nola. This is a tough trip uh, for them. And Nola obviously haven't quite been firing this season. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, I'm picking Seattle. I'd like to see them get their front row subs on a little earlier in this game. I think they're putting a lot of pressure on them early. Didn't come on until 75 minutes or so against Austin. So you got to try to work them in a little bit better. But, yeah, picking Seattle at home. Geez, it's it's tough to pick Nola right now. I think that's a little speed bump. Someone already said that for Seattle, but they'll come back. I think Tux is back this week, toughing them up. Uh, it's a long road trip, you know, long road trip from New Orleans to uh, Seattle. Not many direct flights, if any at all. So it'll be a long travel day up there. So I'll go Seattle at home as well to bounce back. They're still three and one. They're in a good situation, and they're fa they're facing a snake bit. Snake bit Nola. I'm looking for Seattle to win that one. Next up, we've got Utah, the Mountain Men, welcoming in. The Jackals, who have their tails between their legs or must have their tails between their legs because of what happened against New York at home, Brian. Yeah, well, here's another 0-3 team, probably one that we didn't maybe expect. Uh, Utah are better than what they've shown. I think they're going to show it at home. They've had a week to rest and kind of talk about whatever has been kind of frustrating them. So I fully expect them to put on a performance here uh, against Dallas. Uh, you know, Utah scrum pretty good. We saw what New York did to Dallas' scrum. Going to have to uh, figure out a convincing win here for the Warriors. That Utah scrum is really, really good. And I think Mikey Tao and Mika Cruze are going to be excited to play off the back of a pack going forward. Uh, Utah to get their first win of the season at home. I think so too. Home cooking is going to do the, the, the Warriors some good. They may have uh, gotten that win in Seattle. That was a bit controversial. So they're not... They're not really a, an 0-3 team. I mean, they are an 0-3 team on paper, but that's a good squad. I think Sean Pittman's crew wins that one relatively easily. The next one, Atlanta. This is an important match and a very interesting match to look at because we're going to find out who Houston is. And Atlanta has been has been playing open-style rugby, with, which they didn't really do last year, but ball in hand a little bit more this year. What do you think about 
Houston and Atlanta, Brian. Yeah, we'll kind of wait and see what the conditions were. They're obviously a bit difficult uh, against San Diego. And, you know, just they weren't, Houston weren't as clinical in that second half. San Diego defended really well. So, um, you know, he, certainly Houston will want to get back into the wind column. But those Rattlers after a week off, you know, I think they'll have tightened up just a little bit. A few loose passes against New York didn't help them. They've already got a strong defense. Got to go with the Rattlers at home in this one. Houston at home against San Diego, I really thought they were going to put in a much more dominant performance. So most have got some troops arriving here. ATL have looked pretty good uh, with the exception of that game against New York. And I think we're finding out that New York's pretty pretty damn good. So I'll, I'll go ATL at home. Home field advantage by a, by a couple. I think Atlanta is going to win this one relatively easily. They have a very potent attack. They're well-rested. They're at home. Houston. Maybe still looking for an identity. Next one up, we have the Gilgronis welcoming in the Giltinis. And this is one where you got to wonder which team Adam Gilchrist in this Gilchrist Bowl is going to be rooting for, Brian. Yeah, good question. I mean, maybe he wants the other team to win so he can just, you know, add the, the, the have both teams up there on the mantelpiece. This is going to be a great game. Austin. They looked great again against Seattle, despite that difficult weather. I mean, really, uh, you know, clinical uh, right before the halftime, they shut down Seattle's office uh, offense and then scored a try like two minutes in the second half. I mean, that's the sign of a, a team that knows how to win um, against L.A., yeah, they beat a tough New England side at home. They got the win in their home opener, but they still just don't quite look as potent as they did last year. Obviously not having Gitto in there and Adam Ashley Cooper is retired, but, you know, so I'm leaning towards Austin. They just look like the better team at this point in the season. Uh, really looking forward to this game, but got to go with Austin at home. Is this the game that we're going to look back at and say this defined Major League Rugby season five? Well, it could, it could be, right? It could, it's, it's the ultimate big brother, little brother situation where LA were quickly crowned the big brothers of this relationship. And I'm sure for Gilly, as long as fans are drinking a Gilgroni or a Giltini and then recovering the next morning at their nearest F45 gym, uh, he's going to be okay. But I just feel like Austin have a lot more to play for in this game. There's a bit of a chip on the shoulder because of that little brother on the way up and so this will be a great game i'll go austin though at home next on sunday the home opener for new york which we talked about with steve lewis boy this is going to be a great game it really is to pick a winner here without looking at the rosters and who's going to play you just give new york the edge because of home field advantage but i thought new england was really good against la out there in the coliseum they've looked a lot better this year couple of calls like the the no try call which was a, was the right call that was you no know, try it was off his hands it was yeah, legit i know call. but like just little things you bounce the ball goes a, a couple of millimeters the other direction hits the la hand and you know anyway revisionist history doesn't exist so yeah this 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 is this will be a tight one i i wouldn't even know where to start it it'll, it'll be tighter than would you shoot that's for sure but um I'll go New York by one just because they're at home, but Whoa. wouldn't be shocked to see the side take this. All right. Well, Brian, you know, we've got everybody talking about the Western Conference this, the Western Conference that, but then a, a team like New England goes across the country on the road and plays well enough to win uh, in L.A. against the juggernaut. And you've got Toronto now back in the in the thick of things, at two and two, and you've got New York decimating Dallas and 3-0. and oh. The Eastern Conference is pretty good, and this is a key, key matchup. I didn't even mention Atlanta, but and now this is a key key matchup. I mean, we've seen the the past you know a couple of years now. It's been so tight in that in that conference. You have to expect it once we get down to playoff season. I mean, those little points, those one point, you know, a bonus point here, uh, just an extra try there, that's going to make a big difference. And it doesn't matter if it's week five in the season. When you're playing these interconference games, they're massive. So this game to me is just as big as that Austin LA one. I mean, this is a big, big game. Really looking forward to this. And I know who you're going to pick, Matt. Uh, I really liked what I saw out of uh, New England. They've got uh, defensively, they're just, they're really committed right now. I love the pressure they're putting in the breakdown. They just have to be a little bit more clinical on offense. They got to spend more time with the ball in hand. They're playing defense just a little too much. I, I think, I think they can work out uh, uh, some bugs, you know, man, New York's got a tough team, but 
I got to I got to pick New England. Somebody's going to stand up for the Free Jacks right here in this conversation. So I'm going to pick New England f- with the upset on the road in a, a great game. Really looking forward to this one. Well, you know what? I was going to pick New England, but because you have this, this instant <laughs> hatred for New York and you just have the hate going on all the time. I'm going to have to just disagree with you, and I'm going to have to pick New York, and I'm going to say they're going to win by six points. Moving on to the next and final match of this weekend, Old Glory up against it going into San Diego. It doesn't get any easier for D.C. No, it doesn't. In San Diego, coming off the back of a great road win down in Houston, thought Will Hooley had probably his best game for San Diego, controlled the tempo of the match really well. Joe Peterson, you know, uh, again, just kicked really well to give them a little lead at the end there, and then they end up closing it out. Ironic that two former Houston players drive the dagger into the Saber Cats' house and the Morani and then Freire. So, you know, San Diego, San Diego are geez, they had a couple of games there where you just weren't sure, but that was a good performance on the road. So, sorry. Well, they're I'll also getting agree. healthy. They are, and I'm sorry to do this dog glory because it's been a tough start to the year for them and for Dallas, but there is uh, there's no love coming from a cross-country trip uh, for the old glory team. And you mentioned, you, you said drive a dagger. I, I drive a Taos, a Volkswagen Taos from Sheehy Auto yeah. Stores. Paul Sheehy, one of the co-owners, of course, with Chris Dunlavey of Old Glory. Not that that was a plug, but I would just no. say, Regardless of what happens on the pitch, you can still get a good deal with Sheehy Auto Stars, Brian. I expected more out of Old Glory against Toronto. I mean, I was ecstatic that that the Arrows got the big win, and it could have been bigger if there was a couple different calls made in that game. But uh, you know, I, I just I expected more out of Old Glory. Defensively, they're just not fronting up. They're disorganized, and they're not uh, they're not hard enough. They gotta, you know, they gotta get in the game. They're only playing on offense right now. I'm, I'm calling them out. Those guys gotta step it up. Until they show me that they can play defense, there's no way I can pick them, especially when they're traveling to the other side of the country to play San Diego, who are starting to look pretty good again. So, gotta pick the Legion at home in this one. Well, what was driving me nuts about the Old Glory game against your Chirana Arrows was in the, at the end of the first half when everybody's just throwing the ball around aimlessly. It seemed the old adage or the rugby one on one. Ball on the ground, man on the ground. And I'm watching the D.C. guys, and I'm not going to say who, but, the, you know, the, all they got to do is fall on the ball. It's, it's the, the time has already expired, I think, in the half, or it's close to it, and they're just trying to pick it up, loose ball on their own. I'm like, go down on the ball! And it isn't. And Toronto scores that back break, back-breaking try right before they go into the shed. Just crazy. But anyway, we're out of time now, but final thoughts before I let you guys go. Brian. Hey, I wish the arrows were playing this week, but <laughs> no. Uh, here's a chance for everybody else to take the limelight. Uh, we'll see what happens, what kind of backdrop I can find next week. Uh, looking forward to those two big games, the one in Austin and the one in New York, are two huge, huge games. So really looking forward to that. But hey, Rattlers well, you are obviously back. have looking to, to you have to have a New York banner behind you for picking New England. If we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, it, just because the the arrows have more juice in their quiver, and they're not playing this weekend, doesn't mean you get off the hook that easy. Daniel, final thought. No, great weekend. Again, for Brian, we've got a great East Coast, West Coast set up here in those two games. So get out to Hoboken if you're in the New York area. It's, uh, Jesus, Steve Lewis didn't do a good enough job selling it. I don't know what will. Get on the ferry, get over there, enjoy some rugby. But on that note, I want to thank Mr. Dan Power, Mr. Brian Ray, our guest Steve Lewis and Ed Fido, and thank you for tuning in. Please sign up for our weekly newsletter. Please hit that subscribe button on YouTube. And please check out our other segments, including the Rugby Odds, that tells you how to bet rugby, and our college rugby wrap-up. And please, please, please sign up for our American Red Cross Blood Donor team. 